Everybody. was thinking I was going to be watching a documentary about tigers because you sold it to me like, well, did you know that there are more tigers in captive in America than there are in the entire world in the wild? I was like, I didn't know that. Maybe I'll learn some amazing things about tigers from this documentary. I What's up you guys and welcome to Adulting with Joy Spring, the how-tos of your 20s told by a 20-something year old, traversing through adult life expectantly and with gusto. Don't forget to check out joyspring.com for the show notes and use the hashtag, hashtag Adulting with Joy Spring for all your comments, suggestions, and hopefully non-violent reactions. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I didn't know that the episode was already underway. So, hi everyone, welcome to SOS. <laughs> welcome to SOS, a new segment of Adulting with Joy Spring. We've got Erin Atide as always. A lot of people were happy to find out that we were doing a daily show. I was so surprised. I know. <laughs> Me too. I thought that we were going to be a hassle to people. They're like, oh man, this is not content that the internet needs at the moment. But apparently, some people were thoroughly happy that we were back together. In all honesty, we were. Me and Joyce decided to do this on a very, very uh, self, very selfish reasons. We just wanted to not lose our minds. But we're, we're happy that you guys are there to listen to us. I mean, definitely. I think anybody who started a podcast um, and, and that podcast has lasted this long, it's it's primarily for their own sanity, right? Like, Yeah, definitely. If, if you like thinking and speaking, this is the right platform for you. So we're, we're happy that a lot of people are enjoying the content and there are mga suggestion parts. Like we were oh. asking them for topics, right? So people yeah. have thrown in. Um, somebody randomly was like, um, "Can you guys do an episode on if it's worth it to buy a condo in the Philippines?" <laughs> what? <laughs> That's so specific. <laughs> But I mean, I guess you know this is this is the kind of conversation that I've I've had with friends, and uh-huh. I, I I always had to talk with friends like okay at this point uh, at this point in your life it's okay for you to own a condominium and, and to really yeah. invest in that, but then eventually you have to move into something bigger or you know kilangman ng lot. It's really an adulting conversation, so it's it just, really is. It's funny, but you know it's something that we can do. <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I don't know if it's very timely, though. Like, I don't know if you know real estate is should be top of mind at the moment. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I, we would love to get into that on a daily basis that we're doing this. Who knows? This might actually be something that we do way past the quarantine. I would not be. I would not. You know, close the door to that. This is obviously something that I thoroughly enjoyed. I missed you yesterday because we didn't have a we didn't have a recording yesterday. How was your Sunday towards Monday? Sunday is always fun for us. Um, we kind of have a routine going already. Every like Mondays to Saturdays, we do the um, early morning wake up, work out, uh, do Devo, and then do work the rest of the day, and then kind of like wind down around eight. 9 p.m. It's pretty mm-hmm. early. But on Sundays, we pig out, bro. Like, we eat whatever we want. Nice. We watch church. We take naps. And then we eat again. And then we take naps again. So, it's, it's a, I, I have taken Sunday slowdown pretty seriously the past three years of my life. So, uh-huh. how about you, Bartz? My last 24 hours have been actually kind of hectic. Uh, wow. I, knew that we, I knew that we didn't have to, we didn't have the show. So, I was like, okay, I need to... I need to get everything uh, in order um, that I that needs to be done. So yesterday I went to I, I went out of the house yesterday. Oh wow! How was it like? Did you see I, any zombies? <laughs> there were birds and there were like amazing no traffic. It was uh, it was great. I, I obviously I didn't do much. Um, I went I because. I live in Mandaluyong and there is a liquor ban here. So oh my we, god! <laughs> I, I did not. Go, I did not go to a liquor store. I did not go to a liquor store. So me and my friends, we kind of hoarded some wines and some some, you know, alcohol to tide us over because we we hope that this you know doesn't reach all the cities. So we had all of we. I had like eight bottles of wine delivered to my friend's house, which was in Makati. And I and I told her I was like, um, I will just pick up the wine downstairs. You don't need to bring it upstairs into your house. You don't need to bring it inside your house because she lives in a village. I was like, you don't need to bring it inside. Just leave it like right outside. I'll pick it up. Uh, so I went there and there's there were like because she's got like a huge house and mm-hmm. uh and my best friend were there. She's the girlfriend of my best friend. 
So she was like, why don't you just hang out here first? We'll spend like a good 45 minutes just catching up, having a little bit in her house. Like we were on opposite sides of the garden. Wow. Yeah. So I saw, yeah, I saw like, I saw trees. Because I live in a condo. (laughs) I don't see trees. I don't see like wildlife at all. So I was looking, I was like, wow. Fresh Nature. This is what it looks like. You can hear the birds chirping. <laughs> so I picked up my wine. I I dropped off the wine from my other friend who also lives in Mahati. So I was like, you, just, I'll just drop it off at your guard. I won't touch anything. Just leave it there. And then I went to Mercury because I needed to buy some stuff for the house. Uh, the one the the one thing that I needed to buy more than anything else was laundry soap. Yes. Oh my gosh. We have been constantly doing laundry. The past two weeks. Right? I live in a condo and I don't have a washer and dryer. So I, I will always had to bring it to a, our laundromat that was in the building. They Same closed. Here. Yep, they closed. They left us parts. They they still have my clothes. Excuse me, sir. brip <laughs> Kasi baka maubusan na kayo brief. Wala! Wala Wala warning pake, or nothing. Brad. Walang pake, grabe. So, luckily enough, I was able to buy some laundry soap. Uh, it's like a soap bar. And here I was this morning washing clothes in my sink. Just trying to figure out like... Ano ba to? Ano ba to nangyari sa atin? And I don't have a sampayan. So I don't know where to to like like bring out my clothes to be dried. It, it's in the bathroom. I don't know if that's gonna be like it's gonna get all. St- I I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna get so stinky. It really is. And if I bring it out here, it's gonna mess up my floor. The, these are the adulting problems that nobody is talking about. I know this. I mean, seriously, yeah, same thing. Kami naman, we have a washer and dryer. It's just that I've never done laundry this much in my life. Like, I can't believe how much laundry I'm churning out. Because usually, you wait two weeks, the right? You go to laundry shop, and then oh. you come back for three days after, and then you're all good. You just put it in your closet, and now you gotta do the gritty work. I know. And I only did, like, my delicates. Mm. Is, if that's a word. Like, is, if that's a word that men can use. I don't know. <laughs> but I've only used, I've only been able to clean my, my delicates. And the whole time, I'm like, I know if there's... <laughs> I know I messed this up one way or another. Aaron, oh Aaron my gosh. I, and true enough, I probably will. I'll let you know tomorrow how stinky my laundry is. That's just one of a slew of problems that I'm sure people are facing these days. Please let us know what, what you're dealing with right now. This morning, right? Because obviously, we received the quality of life namin dito sa condo. I out ko siya the first two weeks. Eh. So, wala na kaming, we don't have gulay anymore. We don't have um, fresh food, uh, fresh meats anymore. So, all I have oh, are no. canned goods and frozen food, right? So, I was uh-huh. like, okay, I have potatoes and I have spam. What? What can I do with it? So I made Bart. Anong ulam ko today? Ang ulam ko today ay baked potatoes. Oh, sorry. Three cheese baked potatoes Ooh. with spam. Ah? Oh. Ah? Oh. Oh. Making Gumana. baked potatoes out mm-hmm. of nothing. Nicely yeah. done. Masarap Nicely naman. Done. So I think it's, we're, we're really trying to be more creative now with how we're dealing with life and how we're dealing with our adulting problems. The usual mga pro- feeling first world problems natin like, ah, oh, we just bring it to the laundry, ganyan. Oh, wala na. Wala, wala na. out the window. And so I think it's just rightful that we do an entire episode on keeping your sanity through this whole quarantine season with some of the best shows that we uh. have been gobbling down the past yes. two weeks. Now, yes. this was something that we we actually um, I saw this uh, as a question from one of my posts, and they were asking like, "Ano magandang songs or what are the things that I should be listening to right now to get encouraged?" And we're gonna be doing that this week as well. But we wanted to yeah. start with movies, documentaries, and things that we've been watching because I feel like we have so much in our top five parts. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I We were kind of talking about doing this earlier today and we said, you know what, let's stagger it out because if we try and go through each and every top five, this will this will be a five hour episode and we, we <laughs> don't want to hassle you with that. We're going to try and make this as simple as possible. We'll start out with things that you can watch, uh, whether they're movies or TV shows. We'll even leave out 
the YouTube content. We'll, we'll mm-hmm. leave that because that's something, that's another great topic that we can have later on in, in, you know, in the show. But right now, I, I think the one thing that I watched last night uh, when I got home and, you know, started contemplating how I'm going to do my laundry um, <laughs> was I watched, finally, I, I don't say don't crash wanna... landing on you. Don't say no, crash no, 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 landing no, no. on you. I, I'm not going to make this a, a, <laughs> a, a political thing or anything like that, but I just want to talk about how it was directed and how it was it was portrayed it was fantastic the kingmaker was a fantastic mm. fantastic uh documentary it was so well made so well shot the editing the color grading the the interviews that they had it was phenomenal i'm not gonna put any like political like what i thought about that whatever that's up to you that's that's your you know your decision but for me looking at it from somebody that has you know, watched so many documentaries. I love the way it was presented. It was so good. Okay, so for those who don't know, um, this was this is a documentary that's really been getting a lot of great reviews from people, especially my friends have been recommending for me to watch this. Parts for those who don't know, what is the premise of uh, The Kingmaker? Yes, The Kingmaker. Yeah. The Kingmaker is the story of Imelda Marcos. Mm. And they, they parallel... Uh, this the I guess the life of Ferdinand Marcos with the life of Bongbon Marcos with Imelda Marcos being the centerpiece of it all. Ooh. Yeah, they touch on a, a lot of very very uh, interesting interesting topics all throughout. Uh, whether it was during Ferdinand Marcos' time or you know. Bong Bong Marcos's recent run for vice president. Again, mm-hmm. no political view here. Uh, it, it was it was amazing how they showed the parallelisms with both, and how Imelda was the centerpiece of it all, trying mm-hmm. to make everything work in that's cool in, in in the utmost way. Yeah. But the 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 way that I think that it was so cool, and the way that I appreciated it was. It was told from an outsider's perspective, mm, Unbiased was, opinion, ba siya? Unbiased. Well, it, Me, the all the interviews, kasi, are from Filipinos, and there are some Americans that were like the the wife of the uh, of the the like ambassador to the Philippines, Kenyan. Mm-hmm. So it was based on somebody that learned about the situation and learned about everything as they were going along. Okay. Cool. So that cool. that's that's the, it was such a refreshing way. Because with us, we're always so deep into the Philippine political scene, mm-hmm. but with this one, it was like a it. And they were talking about like the animals. I'll send it's crazy. You, I'll send, it, it's it's very interesting. It's okay. very interesting. Cool. So yeah, the Kingmaker is something that you can watch, and and also, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that even if you're not interested in the political part of it, it's just you know learning about history and even yes. just the psychology behind um, how you make these influential people, the people behind these influential people. It, it's really really interesting. It was very interesting. And another uh, documentary might I suggest uh, that I finished la- yesterday. Lang I started and finished uh, yesterday. It was. Um, What's the name of that uh, NFL player? Uh, the mind. Of, oh yeah, um, uh, uh, Alexa Hernandez. Yeah. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. That was phenomenal. It was that amazing. Was great. Wait, let me just uh, Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez. For, <laughs> yeah. So um, it was called the mind of Aaron. Uh, the mind of Aaron Hernandez and. Uh, it's amazing. It's four episodes long, four or five episodes long, and I, I I finished it yesterday because we did nothing yesterday apart from go to church, eat, and then watch Netflix. And it was really well made. Um, a lot of a lot of great insights there. It's very um, malalim din siya. It's 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 very heavy too. So if you want mm. something that's not that's not too heavy. That's probably not what you're going for. But yeah. I, I got fascinated with it because not only did I learn about Aaron Hernandez, they also learned about the NFL and how these things work, how people get scholarships, you know. And it was it was such a an entertaining documentary and also so deeply rooted in psychology and um, sociology, which I think a lot of people will enjoy. I loved uh, I loved that documentary. You know me, I love like murder mysteries mm-hmm. and I love all of that kind of stuff. So when they added like it was 
you know, sports and all that. I was like, oh my God, I got to watch this. And the thing is, when the news broke about the Aaron Hernandez case, I, I was watching the, I was watching SportsCenter and I was, I saw this develop as it went along. So now when I watch that, to see the behind the scenes, to see the, the in-depth part, to, to actually know more about Aaron Hernandez and how the New England Patriots were reacting to it and the way the NFL was as well. It was a great, great way to go. And I like that we started this out with the heaviest <laughs> possible documentaries that we could show and, and like, you know, tell you guys. It's all downhill from, from here. <laughs> going from starting from me doing my laundry in my underwear to now, to now talking about the, the, the most deep-rooted documentaries uh, that you can find online right now. So I guess we can, we can go a little bit lighter. Okay. Uh, we can go a little bit lighter. Um, I think that... Wait, that, um, why don't we run down all the documentaries that oh, we documentaries. love? Oh, documentaries. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Because there are a lot of great documentaries on Netflix. And we were talking mm-hmm. about this on the other episode, that if you are doing two only shows per day mm-hmm. during this quarantine to discipline yourself, Aaron was saying that one should be entertaining and then the other one should be, you know, you, you'd be learning something, whether that's something yes. profound or something that's just trivial. Um, mm-hmm. And um, uh, so two other things that I loved watching that, um, Aaron kind of put me on is 100 Humans. Yes, so good. Yeah, 100, 100 Humans, humans so good. was was one of the the great ways to make something so nerdy. Yes, into something really really cool. Mm-hmm. I yeah. and when I first saw it, I was like, because because for me, whenever I watch something, I, I don't know if it's the same for everyone else, but whenever I watch something there's always a person that comes to mind. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Like, oh my, Aaron would love this. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. So when I saw hundred humans, there were three friends that really came to mind. You were the first person because, uh, your, your affinity with sociology and trying to understand the human mind is bar I love none. It. Yeah. it is bar none. So when I saw that it was answering some of the stupidest, most <laughs> mundane questions with incredible, incredible scientific procedure, I knew, oh man, Joyce is going to love this. And, and they have guests also that kind of explain the deep, because I think the hosts just have these weird experiments, right? Like they have yeah. these things in mind where do you equate the amount of, uh, amount of the sperm count to a great dancer is that what what makes them really attractive and then behind it you, you kind of have interviews in between with scientists and sociologists that will kind of explain to you uh this was the assumption because it kind of has a yes. science background so it was, it was really cool really really funny and like for for those that are wondering okay like what are the things that they're experimenting what some of the ones that i absolutely loved was uh who, who was the better sex who was the better gender was it male or female and some of the experiments that they had there was uh who uses more words oh yeah i haven't i haven't gone there so let's oh so no that i i won't i won't ruin anything (laughs) but they they got the 50 men and the 50 women and they had to try and explain to someone how to play tic-tac-toe and they counted the number of words and they compared who uses more words on explaining something, whether it is men or women. And it was so like, I would have never thought of that. I would have never thought that that was a, that you could have figured out, you know, that kind of way to do it. Or the, the best one there was like, who takes longer to get ready, men or women? Ooh. So they did, they did a whole experiment on trying to see who gets ready faster, whether it is male, uh, the male or the female, uh, species. It was so did, good. Did your door just close? Yeah, it's it's the wind. It's the okay. wind. Okay. Are you sure it's not somebody else there? No, it's my laundry. My laundry's getting so sticky <laughs> and that, that it, they were like, let's close it just to make sure. For people who aren't watching this and listening on the podcast, Aaron's um, door just automatically closed behind him. So I'm making fun of him. Okay. You so you know what? If there if there was a ghost here, I would be so worth it already. Be like, <laughs> I need to talk to somebody. Come on, man. Whip out the Ouija board parts. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's do that. Let's do the Ouija. Let's go. All right, let's go. I got it. Okay, so we've got, um, what else? Do you, I, I mean, nothing. It's, it's a little heavy, but I also love Don't With Cats. 
Oh, don't so with good, cats or yeah. it, it was so good. Yeah, that was so heavy though. It was, was incredible. Intense. Intense. One of the heaviest documentaries I've ever watched, but also pretty interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. how about you, parts? I, um, uh, the one that I want to watch later is the, uh, American Factory. Did you see that? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm probably going to be watching tonight. Uh, again, I try to start my day with something light or with the news. And then uh, during the day, I watch something a little bit heavier. And then at night, I try to watch a documentary. So later tonight, I'm. Uh, it was nominated for an Oscar. So I was like, hey, I might as well give it a shot. Why not? Let's do it. And also, um, last on the documentary, and I think probably my favorite so far out of everything that I've watched during this quarantine is the unparalleled documentary <laughs> on cocaine, Tiger King. Yes. <laughs> Joe, remember I, I I don't know if this, I don't know if I told you this on air or off air, but I told you the name Joe Exotic is the least weird thing about the show. You did and say you, that, and you were you like, say "No, that. that can't be. That can't be." I told you. Here I was thinking I was going to be watching a documentary about tigers because you sold it to me like, well, did you know that there are more tigers in captive in America than there are in the entire world in the wild? I was like, I didn't know that. Maybe I'll learn some amazing things about tigers from this documentary. I did not learn a thing about tigers, but I did learn about the crazy people who own them in America. And it's so interesting. And I'm not saying that Carol Baskins fed her husband to the tigers but Carol Baskins did feed her her husband to the tigers. So. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> oh man! Oh god! I, I I don't want to ruin it for anyone. I know I know that people are gonna hear watch this and they're gonna want to hear this and watch this and they're gonna want to watch. Uh, I I highly suggest that you do because there's a lot of things that are coming out in April. Uh, so while we're still in like the tail last minute of March, please check it out. It's only seven episodes. I, I and I will say it again. I cannot say that it is a great documentary, <laughs> but you cannot stop watching it. Yep, yep. I, I was looking at um. I, I was so I've been so obsessed with this show that I was looking on Twitter and just looking at all the memes on Tiger King, and uh, somebody tweeted like. She talked to her therapist now saying like, man, I can't get my mind off of this um, coronavirus thing. And the therapist just said, well, you can start watching Tiger King. <laughs> and then true enough. And then true enough, you don't, you like for seven episodes straight, you are just immersed in this amazing, incredible world of tiger owners in the South of, of America. It's, it's crazy. It is uh, unreal. It is yeah. unprecedented. So please check out <laughs> uh, any of those five. If ever you do, you know, take a take a little Instagram story, uh, tag us because we would love to see who's checking out the stuff that uh, we're suggesting. Now, if there's anything that you guys suggest that we should watch as well, I am very open to all suggestions. I have a lot of time on my hands. You know we know? have suggestions here, parts from okay. Instagram. So let's let's read them out. Um, a lot of people have been telling me that Anne with an E is pretty good. Anne with an E. Yeah, so it's 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 on um, Netflix. Um, we also, well, of course, the crash landing on you and the it they want glass. Okay. Uh, suggestions my question, are here. My question is, how long is it going to take before you get into Korean dramas? How it's been, much more of this? It's been so long that my my husband is telling me that he wants to watch Crash Landing on You. And this is the guy who refuses to watch anything that has subtitles on them because uh-huh. he doesn't know where to look. Kasi nakaganan yung mata niya, oh. Nakapoint upward and downward. So, parang ayaw niya. But then, like, two, three days ago, he was like, baby, come on, nagpaparamdam na yung Crash Landing on You sa atin. Kasi every time after we watch a Tiger King episode, uh, when we finished it, yun yung next na ad, di ba? And so now... I, 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 you know what? I, I love you guys. I love everyone who has a different taste in uh, documentaries and movies and series than myself. But I just am not interested in crash landing on you. And I know that what? a lot of, a lot of people no, say it's great, but it's, it, I don't know. Maybe also because I'm not a big um, rom com fan. You know me. That's the thing. I'm a huge rom com fan. Well, are I, you on I, it? No. Why? 
I I don't know. Aren't I... you? I mean, I love the I love the pa sweet pa bebe Korean drama. Because and and my fr- and here's the thing. So my Christian friends are also suggesting it because they're like. Joyce, promise, magugusta mo to. Tsaka wala masyadong sex. Walang sex, walang gano'n. This is super, ano lang daw talaga. It's clean. Wholesome. Like, wholesome talaga. Wholesome so if you talaga. want something, if you want to uh, drama, drama, romantic uh, series that's wholesome, this is the perfect one for you. And they're also saying that the, the storyline is pretty good. So... You How about you, parts? You obviously sold me the wrong side of it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so I'm the balance. I'm the balance of this show. You know what I mean. That's right. I, I, I don't know. I, I think. I think it has come down to it. To what are you gonna give in to first? Uh, crash landing on you or TikTok? I already gave in to TikTok, but <laughs> only out of compliance. But see, it's been it's been really helpful. Yesterday, oh by the way, yesterday I worked. Pala, we had this um. There's a Sunday show on GMA called All Out Sundays, and uh-huh. Aaron, uh, Aaron and I, Wancha and I, were guests on it, <laughs> and so we, they would not want me as a guest <laughs> on that. And here's the thing: if you are with me, then you would have done TikTok live on air while it was airing on both TV and digital. So you know, Wancha doesn't do TikTok. I don't do TikTok, but I do have an account, so it it, it came in handy. So. Okay. All right. Pwede, so pwede. There, there, that's you have. There you have yeah. it. Okay. What oh, other suggestions do they have? Um, another show that I love that somebody suggested to me and and oh, between Kalyanta, the the wife oh, yeah. of Coach Chappy Kalyanta, messaged uh-huh. me maybe two years ago or last year, and she messaged me. She's like, Joyce, I think you're gonna love the Good Place. Yes. And I do. Yes. I love The Good Place and it's on Netflix. I don't think the latest season no, is the there. No, the latest season isn't there yet. Yeah, so the first three seasons oh. are there. I love The Good oh, Place. Oh, I remember telling you to watch The Good Place. I remember, we were still doing, we were still doing our radio show together mm-hmm. and I said, Pars, you need to watch The Good Place. It is all about ethics and, philosophy. you know, philosophy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, you're going to love this. And you're like, I'm kind of busy. But I'm so happy that you got into the good place. So, so good. Yeah. So between Kalyanta actually messaged me privately. She's like, girl, you got to watch this. And then I messaged her after I gobbled down two, uh, two seasons. And she's like, I'm not even there yet. <laughs> so it's yeah. really light. It's super funny. You learn a lot of things. You'll fall in love. Um, and you, Shellstrop is just, she's my spirit animal. Like, yeah. And it- if you if you want a show that has absolutely no chance of cursing, that is the show. <laughs> what the fork? There is what the fork, right? <laughs> There's nothing. It's so good. Please do check that out. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, so many suggestions here. Of course, you still have the money heists. Ooh, something that I I liked on Netflix that you also suggested. Uh, All the bright places. Yes, that was very good too. I enjoyed yeah. that. See, I, I gobble a lot of content up uh, so I know like what's the, the good stuff and the bad stuff. What What is one show that a lot of people liked that you tried that you didn't like? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, Money Heist. Really? It didn't, it, it didn't hit you the same way? It didn't. I mean, I watched the first two seasons and then after that, I was just kind of like, mm. it, it was too... How do I say? It was too Spanish teleserie for me. Do you, do you, like, I didn't have a uh, breathing okay. space. Do you understand? Like, it was yeah. so intense all the time that I didn't have breathing space. And so I, I'm not that type of viewer because I like being paced. I like being surprised. And then it was, it's kind of a lot of mind games in between and then surprise mm-hmm. again. Money Heist is just, it's an amazing show. And it's for that complete intensity. It's, you know, everything was yeah. happening. Things was Things were blowing up. People were dying. Yeah. People were having sex. It, it was just crazy. So, I, yeah. I And that's why I think that uh, w- when you really look at it, Joyce is drawn more towards English storytelling, like like England, like mm-hmm. London, England storytelling, like Sherlock. If you guys yes. have not seen Sherlock, watch Sherlock. It's very slow paced. It's very... Uh, it plays with your mind more instead yes, of your eyes. That's so what that's- I like. The Crown. I mean, obviously, The Crown is probably my my top one. 
top one, Black Mirror, The Crown. Really? Those are all, yeah, those are all English series. I love The Crown. I cry with The Crown. And I'm not a crier. And this latest wow. season that they have is the best yet. So if you haven't started watching The Crown, girl, I am changing your life today and introducing you to Queen Elizabeth. Go and really? watch it. And then you okay. just... It's it's crazy and and another show that's um, England really that since you 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 put it out already, the darkest hour is also on Netflix. The darkest hour, what's that? The darkest hour is about Winston Churchill, who was the prime minister during the time uh, that they yeah yeah during the World War. So it it was um it it's it's an amazing movie. And then sorry, I'm I'm rambling on. Last suggestion. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's also related uh, to to Winston Churchill is um, Jojo Rabbit. It's a movie. It's not on Netflix. Yes. It's, it's Jojo Rabbit. Jojo Rabbit is the, oh my gosh, it's such a perfect film. Have you Taika watched Waititi. it, Bart? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Taika Waititi is the, he, if, if I could give birth to another man's child, it would be Taika Waititi. <laughs> he was, he is phenomenal. He is He is one of my favorite uh, comedians, writers, producers. I've been following his work all the way back to his like flight of the concords days uh he, hey i love flight of the concords too that was him uh another and if you're like looking for that kind of comedy the the thor ragnarok he, he also did that but mm -hmm. what we do in the shadows please watch the movie and the tv show both of those are taika waititi amazingly hilarious what we hilarious do in the shadows stuff. okay what we do in the shadows so what we do in the shadows is a mockumentary of vampires. Oh, wow. Wait, let me so, write that down. Yes, it is. Oh my God. It is the, one of my favorite comedy movies of all time. What we do in the shadows, the, the movie and the TV series. Oh, the, the TV series is going to resume in April. So season two is coming out then. Please do check it out. You know, we're, we really are living in at a time where every you're just you're so spoiled with great content right yeah. when i was growing up the the things that my parents would watch were desperate housewives and grace anatomy and and that that was pretty much it like you didn't yeah. have a lot of things that you could or or will and grace and and friends and and all of these shows but it, it wasn't really as diverse as it as it is now and you have so many channels where, where you can actually watch great content do you have any more suggestions parts and dami mong alam din na mga movies and series eh? yeah i i mean i could go on for days but at the end of the day like earlier, while I was waiting to get this done, I I'm, I'll still go back to my Brooklyn Nine Nine. I'll still go back oh. to my How I Met. It's still it's still what I do. I know. I love watching all that new stuff, but I need me some Jake Peralta. Cool, 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 cool. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> nine Nine. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine is also pretty. It's amazing. So it's one of my favorite yeah. shows too. You guys should watch that. Yeah. All right. Wow. Hey man, we got a lot of content. That, that you guys can consume. Again, like I said, if there's anything that you guys think that we should try, I can't, I can't guarantee that I will not start crash landing on you before this quarantine ends. I can't guarantee it. You should. And you are probably the only person who can actually explain to me why I should watch it. Like Aaron is or the only why you shouldn't exactly exactly so so Aaron would always be the guinea pig with these things if he tells me I'm gonna <laughs> like it I'm probably I'm most definitely gonna like it if he tells uh -huh. me I'm not gonna I'm gonna hate it I'm most definitely probably gonna hate it so yeah you have to tell so me parts I'm the I'm the one that like tastes the food if it's poisoned and all that before <laughs> Joyce does so that she doesn't have to go through that I I'm the one that you know will be the guinea pig you're right and I'll, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll gladly do that. Wait, last last suggestion from the both of us. Aaron Atide, um, I think I saw him watching this film on, on his Instagram stories. And one of my good friends, Jama, also messaged me. And he told me to watch The Platform on Netflix. Yes. We can't end this episode without talking about The Platform. Parts? I'm going to give you, okay, uh, my, my last two suggestions, I'm going to make, since the platform is very, very, very heavy, I'm going to counteract it with something that's not. Okay. So the, pla the platform is a Spanish movie. Um, and it is honestly one of the, the most outlandish ideas I have ever, I've ever seen in a movie. Uh, they didn't try to explain the way that it is. So 
there there's two people in a floor and there's food that is being brought down mm -hmm. on a platform and it whoever's on top gets to eat as much as they want and then all the way down to the bottom the people at the end obviously run out of food mm -hmm. so it is a, a huge socio-political commentary on the way that the world is that the people who are on top will be able to consume as much as they want and leave nothing for the rest um and it's gruesome I, it's it's deep it's, did you watch it already yeah i did oh yeah yeah it's it i don't i don't i can't explain it but i loved it i loved yeah. it, it was great. It's, it's, you, you need to debrief yourself after, like mm. if you live with someone that can, you can watch with you, it's, it's a conversation piece. It's one yes. of those things that the first five minutes of it, I didn't know the concept. I just followed my friend who was watching it. I saw you watch it. So I, I just went on and watched it with, with, um, Wancho. And the first five minutes I messaged Jemai and I was like, is this a socioeconomic uh, representation of what the world is now going, going through? And he was like, just watch it, Joyce. Just, and, and it's one of those things. It'll have different effects on different people. It's like yes. Paris, you'll yes. either incredibly fall in love with it or you'll absolutely abhor it. So yes. go and watch it and, and tell us what you think. And the lighter one that you'll suggest, Parts. My lighter one. Cleanse your palate. Lighter, there's, uh, there's no platform filled with food and people like, Dying, killing yeah. each other. No, no mm -hmm. it's not that. This one is called Modern Love. Ooh. It is a, 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 a show on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. And it is all of the love stories. Because Modern Love is a, is a segment on the New York Post. Uh, and then in the New York Times, and where it's all about it's people sharing their stories, their love stories. And what Amazon Prime did was they got eight of the stories, they got star-studded cast to reenact and to to have you know bring those stories to life. Oh so wow! There's one, yeah, there's one episode where it's Anne Hathaway, who is, uh, it was a, a fantastic episode. There was one with Dave Patel. Um, mm -hmm. where he's like a he's like a Silicon Valley guy. Oh, and, and it's just, Dave Chappelle, yeah, right? Oh, oh see, see Dave Chappelle and see Dave yeah, Patel. No, Dave no Patel. okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's it's very light, uh, very interesting. It's very New York, and I know that you love New York, so that's that would be my final suggestion for uh, for today. Awesome. So those are our favorite, some of our favorite shows and documentaries um, um. that we've been watching this whole quarantine time. If you're wondering why we've been able to watch that much, eh, well, why haven't you? What have you been I doing? I got nothing else stuff? to do. There's nothing else to do. Um, but obviously, we still have um, things that, to listen to, um, movies uh, to watch, also books to read, and some other things that we'd like to suggest to you guys to keep you entertained, informed, and really just sane throughout this whole yeah. quarantine period we're just gonna have a nice little conversation uh trying to uh, balance out all of the, the different levels in our head right now so hopefully you guys like it uh if there's any more suggestions or any suggestions for topics as well please do let us know that's right. Hashtag shot of sanity SOS with adulting with joy spring and Aaron Atide. And of course, if you like this uh, video and this episode, you can also listen to the next one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Nice. We'll see you guys then. I'm Aaron. I'm Joyce. Palam. And that's it for this episode. If you'd like to continue the conversation, go to www.joyspring.com. And if you want to support the podcast, go to patreon.com slash adulting with joy spring. I'll talk to you guys soon. Palam.